Hello, you're watching Alvin Wax, and today let's talk about a recently finished airing Chinese web drama, Jiu Yi Ren, Faithful. This is a technically 24 episodes drama plus one extra episode of Easter Egg, so 25 episodes web drama that has recently finished airing on the web platform Tencent. It is directed by Zhang Xichuan, best known to be a film director in China, written by Huang Fen and Cao Xiaotian as the adapted script writers. They have previously collaborated on the script Jiang Zhao Li Ming. As for Jiu Yi Ren, Faithful, it is based on a novel published back in 2019, written by the author Li Bojian. The drama is led by Wu Qian, Li Jiahang, Qiao Zhengyu, Hu Yixuan, shot from October last year to the beginning of this year. I have finished watching the whole drama. I'll give it a two gold mine rating. It is a slightly inflated rating because parts of the production quality, I think, can still be improved on greatly. But I think it has many merits that unfortunately, many not high budget, Period drama these days no longer care about, and this drama happened to do it very well. Therefore, I would inflate the rating and give it a two gold mine. The Chinese title Jiu Yi Ren, Nai Faithful People, or Nai Loyal People, kind of already spoil the story for you. You're gonna have an ensemble cast that involves nine main characters. They are bound together because of one event, and then they all act as if they are in a type of brotherhood. If we look at the current time, then the past time is seven years ago. Those episodes would alternate between seven years ago, now, seven years ago, now, until it hits a point where everything you need to know about the past is explained, and then you fully go into the last bit of the drama where it all happens in present. Our main character is played by Wu Qian. Her original name is Meng Wan, but at current time, she has another name called Gu Songju because she's under disguised with quotation mark identity to carry out a revenge plan or more like a plan to right a wrong in the past that happened to one of her best friend. Seven years ago, she was with this girl, Lin Rulan, played by Hu Yixuan, in this embroidery learning school. This school has a master played by Qiao Zhengyu who has his hands on many girls. And because of his reputation, he's very good at pretending that he's a gentleman and his close connection to a powerful aristocrat in that city that nobody can touch him. For this pair of good girlfriends, they both have been wronged by this guy. But Meng Wan is the girl who took it quietly, silently, and suffered herself. And Lin Rulan decided to go against the grains, sue this guy publicly, under all the pressure that the society gives her and basically destroying her own personal reputation. The Lin Rulan character didn't win in the end and she had to give up her life to, in a way, prove that she's innocent. And her best girlfriend, played by Wu Qian, was very shocked and hurt by that event. So she decided to right the wrong for her best friend. And she planned for seven years, did a lot of work. She started to call in all the people that had something to do with the case seven years ago, formed this group of technically eight of them. And the ninth loyal and faithful person is Lin Rulang herself, who is already dead at this time. Eventually defeat the bad guy in the story. And that's our 24 episodes of the drama. Then at the end, the drama created an Easter egg episode. It is an alternate universe where things didn't go down for anybody the same way as in the real story. I know I kind of spoil the whole story for you, but just by looking at the synopsis, you already know what the story is. You kind of cannot tell people what the story is without telling them that one of the main characters is gonna die seven years ago and that kind of propelled everything happened later. Now let's get into the detailed part about what is worth watching about this drama and what may be the problems. On the positive end, number one, I would call this is a without traffic actor with proper acting, proper script and proper attitude of telling a good story drama. These days we have a lot of period dramas so made to harvest money, attention, whatever, from the fandoms of a specific actor, and they sell the drama on that name. They know they don't even have to do any promotion. The fans of that person would automatically act as Shui Jun, the water army online, to rate it high, to fight against anybody who says anything bad about this drama, and it makes the viewing experience of such dramas always very mixed and complicated and uncomfortable for an ordinary audiences who just want to go and watch a drama who do not care about all the mess in fandom. This is the type of drama that doesn't include any high traffic people, so nobody would bother to fandom guard their actors or acting or the story. If it's bad, 
people are gonna just say it's bad. If you just wanna look at a properly done story without all the bothers from all the messy things in fandom, you should go and check out this one. Number two, what I highly appreciate about this story is it is not focused on romantic love at all. It depicts the ugly parts of romantic relationship. And it has a lot of gaslighting <laughs> in ancient time setting going on that really takes out all the rosy lens that um, a lot of dramas tend to have, particularly from Asia, about romantic relationship between a man and a woman. This drama just <laughs> totally shows you the ugly side and how people can take advantage of that. Basically stop daydreaming girls. The reality is a cruel one. If you're not careful and you trust people too easily, you're gonna burn yourself. In this story, the main bad guy is the guy who molested raped so many girls and was allowed to do it because of this and that for years. And you can have a lot of real life, even till today, 21st century cases that reflect exactly the type of things going on. Think about what just happened in Japan of that organization got dismantled, who's been running for how many years and how many hundreds of people have come out and accused former chairman who's now dead about doing what, what, what. It's kind of hard to believe in 21st century, that type of thing is still going on, but it's going on. So even when this is a period fictional time setting drama, it's talking about something that's super relevant. Apart from the exploration of the dark side of humanity in this story, for the brighter side, for the good people who come together, I also appreciate that they don't overemphasize the importance or the necessity of romance. These people come in mostly not because they love the dead girl in the romantic way. They come in because they find it's extremely unjust. And among these eight faithful people, their potential of love to spark between them or them and other characters. And the drama would touch on lightly different people's personal romantic story, but it never was, let's say, the center of the narrative. Its importance to the main plot is clearly ranked. And again, it doesn't emphasize on the rosy lens of the romantic relationship. It actually focuses more on the realistic end of it. And for most of them, they don't end in happily ever after way. So overall, this drama is so anti Lian Ai now. In that way, it's so different from the 99% of period idol drama these days you see in Chinese drama land that are just like... So I highly appreciate this drama as almost a breath of fresh air, looking at this with a much colder and rational lens. The third point I would say that I appreciate about this drama is even though it has clear right and wrong, good and bad in this drama, it also allows space for every character to show you that they are three-dimensional, they're complicated people. They are not just good for being good sake or bad, just being born bad. They have gone through specific things in their past that kind of shaped them to become who they are. That means the script writers have sat down and really thought through every character and how we can make them organic and realistic and just juicy. The last thing I would say about this drama is if you like this type of right the wrong, the justice, the element of revenge and people planning for a long time and carry out step by step like a chess play. If you like these things, this drama is worth checking out for a bit. So these are all the good things I can see in Jiu Yi Ren, but this drama is by no means perfect. So now let's talk about what are the things I think are not so ideal. Number one, the overall production quality is at a medium level of what you can see from Chinese drama land, taking account of sets, props, camera work. It just seems to be a very procedurally carried out, shot and done period drama. Nothing stand out as special. If you've watched a lot of tense and period dramas, it's still that style, that look, that color, that lighting, that level of skin smoothing. I don't know whether it's because the specific actor or actress who has that requirement is, if I have a close up, you have to smooth my skin to this level. Or is it because the director or whoever thinks it needs to be done? But certain people have more skin smoothing than other people. People, and sometimes when they cut back and forth, it looks a bit weird. Also, I'm not so much a fan of the look. I feel because this is a, although fictional time, although set in ancient time, but a rather realistic story. They should pick a more realistic look for it, a grittier, higher contrast probably even in the design of costume and props to make it heavier. Right now, it still is a very pretty and romantic look of a period drama that is talking about a rather heavy and realistic thing. And I do feel they may not be the best match, but that's just me. Number two mainly on the female lead actress Wu Tian. On one hand, appreciate her acting for this drama because I think she's done what she thinks is appropriate and probably a director thinks is appropriate for this particular character and her function in the story. But 
On the other hand, in my personal opinion, the style of acting she did basically is not really the best choice. She's a very quiet, mute and not so brave a character at the beginning of the story in contrast to Hu Yixuan's role who is a brave girl who got destroyed. So I understand from the creator's perspective they created Hu Qian's role as a very introvert and contracted character. Her posture is often very like this and she speaks with very slow, very low and very mute voice and that carries through the whole drama. But I would argue that she is the most important role and she definitely has the most amount of screen time. Basically her image and her voice and her presence on screen is the soul and is the main thing of the story on the front is her and in the back is the dead girl her best friend in seven years it's these two girls in the whole 24 episodes time she is constantly that over the top quiet like this girl the energy is just too stale everybody else speaks at a very different speed pitch and the way it gets delivered the tones they feel like they belong to one drama and she belongs to a different one it's like she comes from Yun Zhi Yu and everybody else is in Jiu Yi Ren that may be a wrong creative choice because Wu Qian I've seen her in other things before she's played very lively bubbly characters and she can do it for sure I don't know if it's her choice or the director's choice or whoever who thinks that it's the right thing for her role in this drama to do that I find it really jarring and then when I look at the general comments on her acting or if you watch the drama while live comments is going on it gets mentioned constantly by drama watchers that they feel her acting her delivering of the lines is too pretentious because she's intentionally slowing down everything putting her voice down lower pitch and as if she's unharmful girl so that she can do what she does it's too obvious it's too different therefore it becomes extremely intentional so that's my opinion about it um you may feel different about it but i'm just telling you that i do find the way she did the acting of this role is uh leaves some space for discussion the third thing about this drama that i am not 100 percent happy about is i feel towards the end the climax it needs to be the second epic moment of this drama the first one happened seven years ago when the first girl died and that was a really well shot and planned and written scene and it has very strong emotional visual everything impact but for finally when they manage to beat the bad guy it happens at a court situation it's not so well written and the pacing step by step getting to the final hammer down on the bad guy it lacks that one last kick I wish they could have a much more exhilarating ending unfortunately not really happening one last thing is they did the easter egg episode 25 in that alternative universe our bad guy never became a bad guy he had a different childhood that kind of guided him down a different route so that he never become the bad guy i would argue slightly that whether that would cancel out the meaning for previous 24 episodes although it is a uh, easter egg and alternative universe not a huge problem but if you want to do a perfect world where nobody got hurt and they all had their little happiness for me i would do this episode in a totally different style visually even frame i would change the ratio i would change color grading i will make it look totally different and it will make it super clear to the audiences that um, from second one of the alternative universe story that you're looking at something that is almost like the creators feel so bad for the good people in the original story that they have to do a fan fiction archive of our own type of thing right to do it for those characters that is just my personal choice i feel that would be more interesting at least to look at so that would be the end of this review video this period drama is one of the better ones i've seen in recent couple of months from chinese drama land i would highly recommend you going and at least give it a try see if it's your cup of tea thank you for watching avenue x i'll see you in my next video meanwhile live long and happy drama watching